This is Peter Patty and I'm going to give a quick demonstration showing an example of how we can implement some powerful new application functionality using just configuration tools without writing any code. So the scenario here is that um, we have some functionality that's used in various places in the product um, to allow you to trace through a network and uh, so one of the types of traces you can do is a shortest path trace and so here we were finding the shortest path from this cabinet to this manhole and it's traced around here. Uh, now what a customer asked us is they said they wanted the ability to be able to indicate that a particular structure is blocked. Uh, either it might be full or it might be in a street that they can't dig up or something like that. So they want to be able to indicate that um, one of these sections is blocked and then uh, the tracing would have to find a different route. Uh, so that's what we're going to implement in this demonstration. So uh, there's two main things that we have to do here. The first is to uh, add an attribute to uh, our underground route feature. Um, we can just select that now and you can see over here the existing fields that are on an underground route. Um, and so what I want to do is add a field called blocked to that. So if I come over here and I'll pick the underground route feature and you can uh, control lots of different aspects of this feature here but what I want to go to is stored fields and I can say let's add a field so we'll add a field called blocked I'll make the external name blocked with a question mark and then we'd like that to be a boolean field and we'd like to give it the default value of false and I'll say it's a mandatory field. So uh, that's that. I can save that. Now there's just one other thing that I need to do to make it visible. Over here uh, we list the properties that are visible on the user interface. Here you can see there's a few remaining fields over on the right hand side that are currently not visible. But so I can just drag the blocked field over here. Uh, let's put it at the end. Um, so now that will be uh, one of our visible fields. So I'll just save that and now if I go back to my application here I'll just refresh the screen. If I come and look at that you can see we've now got uh, a field that says blocked on the underground route and that has picked up the default value which is false. So now what I need to do, so I've, I've changed my uh, underground route feature so we can indicate that it's blocked. Now we just need to go to our network definition and here we've got a network called routes. Over here we list all the features that participate in that route and then you can say uh, when we're tracing you have a filter. So on the underground route um, uh, we can put a filter in here. Another nice feature I'm going to show you is that we have context sensitive help. So if I can't remember exactly what that filter should look like, I can just say help and help about this page. And it takes me directly to the relevant page in the documentation. So if I just scroll down a little bit here, um, I can see an example of a filter here. And so here it's showing in use equals true. I can see here that I put the square brackets around the field name uh, and then that predicate so I'll just go back here and in my case uh, the field name that I created was called uh, blocked and so uh, what we say here is the records that we do consider for the trace so I can say I want to trace down where the value of blocked is false uh, so I'll add that into my trace definition save that So now let's go back to our application. So we'll bring up the network trace tool. And we want to go between the same two structures that we had before, the cabinet there to the manhole up here. And so we say trace the shortest path, then we get the same result as before. But now what I'd like to do is I'll go to this underground route here. You can see we have the new field. And if we click edit, we have a little Boolean selector there. We can save to say that's true. 
that is blocked. And now we can rerun the trace. We still have the same thing selected. And this time you can see it's traced around the other side of the loop, the longer side, uh, to avoid the blocked side. So there you see we were able to build that powerful application in just a few minutes to uh, add a field to an existing feature, populate it, and change our trace rules to recognize that new field on the feature.